everybody here. And if you can recognize them. Yeah, I can. <laughs> oh, John, <laughs> wait till you see what John's doing. I'm not even. You'll have to wait till a bit. Oh, no, is that right? All right, so. All right, you, you guys, stop it. All right. Okay, you got to know a couple of people here from the Historical Society, uh, from the program committee, and every other thing, the board, and is Judy Galo. And she's she's very young. She graduated in '76. Oh, yeah. um, and Ken Ken Chalmers, he's the video tech guy. Does the website. Does everything. He's a great volunteer. And you know, thank you for coming. And so, what we're going to do here today is. This is December 4th, 2022, and that has to be on the video because what we've done at the Historical Society is find videos from years ago, and we have no idea when they're from. Oh, <laughs> so we're going to do sense. that. And so welcome from the Brunswick uh, Area Historical Society. And my name is Nola Benjamin, keyword Benjamin, Lothar. <laughs> And I am the moderator of this, the first ever panel of Brunswick, wow. former Brunswick High School students who are going to uh, be involved in a, a, a discussion of the lived experience of being a student. And our focus today is sports and school spirit in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And uh, the 60s was a long time ago. <laughs> and, and so, um, who's assembled here today are people who played sports and cheerleaders and pep club Cheerleading people. is a sport. Oh, I'm Yay. sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Hassan. That was very nice. Okay, the cheerleading sport, the band members, which I think that was a sport. Okay. And uh, no, that's musical. That's, that's pep talent. club, that's girls that's athletic talent. association. That's you talent. know, that's all talent. the people that yeah, you know provided some kind of spirit. <laughs> um, give a little background of what we're doing here. Is the Brunswick Area Historical Society is located at Heritage Farm in Brunswick on Laurel Road. And there's a picture of it from the website. Mm -hmm. And if you've never been there, you have to go there immediately <laughs> and, and, and look at it. Knew about it. And you so this is there. part of the Brunswick uh, park system. And what was discovered, there's a lot of stuff in this, these buildings and it's been donated. And what was discovered was there's a lot of stuff about schools over decades about Brunswick schools. And it's like, what to do with all this stuff? It's in boxes and drawers and stuff. And so in 2017, some of the leadership with great uh, foresight there decided we need a building to display all of this stuff. And so they got together and planned this building and who these people were is it wasn't me and so you help me with this it was carl bilski Aww. who it was dave goodyear it was sam boyer and it was joyce petchler and a bunch of other people got and, uh, involved afterwards yeah. okay. and they got together and they said we're going to get a building and so to just focus on schools and so what they did was they got some local politicians together and they got uh, together a matching funds grant and it was from the Ohio Facilities Construction Company and they gave um, a, you know a fair amount of money but it was matching and then there were generous donations from the Ken Cleveland Foundation and he might have like built your house and uh, the Waite family which I'm Foundation, I'm sorry, it's a competitor, but you know, <laughs> um, and the First Christian Church, and you know, they they were some major donors for this, and then there were like about a gazillion fundraisers, which are still going on, 
for this. And um, the bottom line is we still own a, owe a big chunk of change for this building. So we're going to be passing the hat, of course. <laughs> Um, so the building interior is very near completion and so within a few months what you're going to see is open to the public are displays of Brunswick school artifacts mm -hmm. and um, I think you know you guys are artifacts so maybe you can just come up there and see <laughs> so <laughs> No, you know, we are all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not you? Okay, we're all. <laughs> all right, so. <laughs> what, also, part of this project is the bell tower. Millie, can you, like, scroll up on this website? me? Just with your finger on the screen. Oh, like this? On the screen, yeah, just pull. Oh, and I'm wow, going to tell you yeah, when to stop. Oh, cool, stop. <laughs> oh, I thought that. Okay. Good job, Bill. <laughs> we got a technical wizard. Here. Okay, so part of this uh, part of this school thing is the bell tower, and that is Carl Bilski's, I believe, rendition of the bell tower, which is actually up now. It was his design. He would he, he, he designed, he the designed thing, it, and the idea to use the bricks. From Edwards and I mean, Tanner. Carl is a genius. This is a 600-pound bell. It looks a little small there, but it's 600 pounds, and it was built, however you build a bell, it was built in 1852. Oh. And it was built for the Brunswick United Methodist Church, and it was brought over here from New York to the Methodist Church, and then they, like, uh, gave it or whatever. Sold it. Sold it. With the building. To, to the Disciples of Christ, who became the first... Christian Church of yeah. Brunswick. Oh, <laughs> and when they and they just yeah. closed um, after 184 years, wow. and they were very generous um, in donating money to uh, the Historical Society, a, a large, large sum, and also gave us money to, um, with the bell to erect a bell tower. So wow. Carl nice. got to thinking and. And this is, this thing is great. And so it's going to be wrapped, all those bricks around the bottom, it's going to be wrapped by um, bricks that are engraved from the recently demolished Byzantiner and Edwards schools. And I know you all remember those places. <laughs> okay, so, so Carl's got the bricks, he's cleaning them up, and he gets them engraved. And... For a small sum, well, you, can, can buy one. <laughs> yeah. you can get. Pass these around. You can get a brick engraved. Some of you have them. You could always buy another one, and you can get a brick engraved with pretty much anything you want on it, within reason. And uh, and so and you will be preserved forever in in history. Um, Some of the more traditional ones are like uh, the Carlson Funeral Home bought a brick, and they also have one for the Carlson family. Um, Greg and Millie uh, Rooks did, uh, representing their classes, um, what year they graduated. Some people do their uh, their families, like you'll say your mom and dad, and your you know your brothers and sisters, and what year you moved to Brunswick. Type right. Of so. So basically, just get a brick for everybody you know, and and, and, and every family yes. member. And there's probably you're you gonna buy me one. <laughs> we can get you I'll some kind of like, uh, you know, discount for a lot of bricks. Okay, so a section of this website uh, is devoted to the school history, and it currently uh, includes a video called A New Beginning, which is about the history of Brunswick schools, and this is excellent. You really should, should watch it. Um, there's a portion of the website that has digitized yearbooks on it, which were actually done for free. I love this story by a, a prison in... Um, where Oklahoma or Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Wow. and uh, you know you send them the yearbooks and they digitize them and send them back and it's up there I mean wow. if, if you know of any yearbooks that aren't up there you know please submit them we'll get it done uh, and 
Also there on this is a video of a recent class reunion from one of the greatest classes ever and this was produced by John Castley. And so you have got to see this video. I'm telling you, it's so worth it. Yeah. Academy Award winner. Winner. It's not available yeah. yet. Well, it's been available, but it's... it's on its third revision. Yes. Oh, oh, my God. God. And it will be up there soon. It's X-rated, huh, John? Yeah. And along with it on this website, there is going to be a bunch of panel discussions of the lived experience of Brunswick School students, and you guys are the first of these panel discussions. Well, so this is true <laughs> confessions or what? It is. It's, you don't want to confess too much because you know that video camera is gone. So, you know, a lot of the confessions have to be done afterwards. Okay. So, with this panel, I want you to introduce yourself individually and tell us when you were at school and what you contributed to the school and the school spirit and how you benefited. And we're going to have other discussions along the way, but first we're going to do introductions of everybody here. And John, if you go first and tell us about you. Well, I'm, my name is John Casley and I moved to Brunswick in about 1957. I came from, from the west side of Cleveland, and um, I can remember the first week that I was in Brunswick, there was a whole group of kids, uh, Spike Murtis, uh, uh, John Norman, uh, they had built a Tom Lamb, I mean I could go on, but they had built wow. a baseball field back in the woods, and they wanted me to play baseball. And that was my initiation to sports in Brunswick and uh, went to Little League in Babe Ruth. Um, so, and I just, I've always loved to participate, uh, you know, so I've, I've probably tried to participate in as many activities and sports as possible. And uh, just, and fell in love with Brunswick and Brunswick High School and it was the best thing my parents ever did for me. You, have you got, well tell us about the other sports you played and let's see some of these uh, oh, yeah. things you oh, got. You want me to, okay, well I, I participated in, uh, uh, well outside of school we had the Babe Ruth Baseball League which because mm -hmm. Brunswick didn't have a baseball team at the time, um, but it was certainly part of the community. I participated in that and then I was, um, I played football and uh, basketball and track. Um, and I even, uh, you know, when I said I love to participate, I used to get off a of basketball practice and go wrestle with the wrestling team. <laughs> uh, Bill Davis at the time didn't have anybody big enough to wrestle and practice. And so Samari <laughs> talked me into, into going to wrestling practice after basketball practice. So, I, but I enjoyed, I mean, I enjoyed it all. And uh, uh, some of the stuff that I brought, this actually, is not mine. Uh, this jersey was uh, worn by uh, probably Denny James, oh, if wow. any of you remember oh, him. I, um, yes. I had the privilege of playing with him because I was on the varsity as a freshman. Yeah. And uh, Denny wore this and then Richard Damquitz wore it oh, for about one year. And then we got new uniforms. And I don't know if you remember, but the blue, the blue jerseys were short sleeve. And, uh, so Rich got this, they were uh, supposed to clean out the attic at Brunswick um, when he was coaching there. And he ran across, they threw out a bunch of old equipment and jerseys and Rich saw his old jersey so he took it. And he was supposed to come today but he's at home with COVID. Oh. And uh, it's not a girl, it's a, <laughs> it's a disease. <laughs> so I was talking to him and he said, uh, you know, he told me about this, and then I told him about Greg making a donation. So Rich said, well, you know, why don't you take my jersey? So he gave me the jersey, and then I told him, I said, I'd put together uh, a picture of Rich oh. to go along with his jersey. Oh. So this is when he was a senior um, in high school. So you can put that in and hide the moth holes there. But well, let's see a picture of John Casley playing sports. Uh, 
from the family archivist. Now that you mentioned it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this, I was a freshman here, I believe. This was when our uh, our jerseys were long, and uh, I wanted to look like I was from the Cleveland Browns, I guess. But it, I Did you get that, Ken? And then I have another picture here that I just found this morning. Uh, this is the three amigos in the backfield, the George Kecko, <laughs> the fullback John Castley, and Richard Damkowitz. <laughs> and I'd like to preface that with an article. And the article said that uh, they were talking about our quarterback, Ron Malwick, and he said they, uh, I think Al Thomas wrote this article, but he said, I wish Malwick's name was shorter, like Fox, Girk, or Kecko, <laughs> so, that it can, so that it can get in the headlines. That's funny. And then he says, he said, uh, Ron Malwick will probably be one of the best quarterbacks I've seen this year. He can fake the ball to the fullback, but then he hands it off to the second man through, <laughs> which would have been George. So while I was getting the crap kicked out of me, George was <laughs> scoring touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> but, so anyway, that's all I got. Well, thank you, John. Let's go to Mike because he's he's got another uh, TV show to do today. I have to have something to go to. Thanks for it's good to see all of you. First of all, down <laughs> trip down memory lane. Um, I played football with those two guys. I was younger. They beat on me, but I played anyway. Um, I played football. I uh, played basketball with Warren. Football with Greg. And I ran track for one year. Kincaid talked me into that. Um, you know, Brunswick has always been a special place. When we first moved here, which was in the early 60s, there were 5,000 people here. And you, everybody knows how big it is now. And it grew in many ways and in many parts because of the people who cared about the town and wanted to make it special. In, in the days when we were all in school, sports was everything. It really was. One of the biggest times ever was when we played in the district tournament in basketball, and we went to Valley Forge. And no one thought we'd win, but we did. And they had signs all over the gym welcoming the farmers from Brunswick. <laughs> uh, it was a pretty special time. It really was. Um, the athletic conferences were different then. We played Orville and some of the other schools that now aren't quite as big as what Brunswick is. But Brunswick was a special place. It really was. Uh, and Ron Mello was a great quarterback. <laughs> I caught a lot of two-point conversions when he jumped up and threw it out. Nobody could get as high as I did. So um, I would like to see Ronnie. I really would. But that's why I'm here, because it is special. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Let's go to Greg. What's your name? Greg Ross. <laughs> and again, I'll repeat what Mike said. It's so nice to see everybody after X amount of years. But I grew up in Brunswick back in 1957, as John did. And all I remember about Brunswick when we moved, because we moved from the south side, we were, you know, this was like a, a new environment for me. Because all I remember about Brunswick was dirt roads, <laughs> stone roads. Remember Hancock Road? That's right. Stone, yeah. That's right. Big dirt roads, little stone, stone, stone roads, big stones. With tar. Farmland. With tar on them. Yeah. And, and to follow up with what John said about uh, having a field, baseball fields, I was right behind where uh, the Matheny's lived on uh, Hadcock. And they had a field that they converted to uh, a baseball diamond and we used bases we used the cow chips <laughs> for bases so when we'd come home you know our parents would you know mom would say well, how can we kind of smell a little bit because the cow chips we used as bases and we would play from morning till night and we really enjoyed ourselves I think living in Brunswick at that time 
because you could do anything. You could go to the creeks, you could go in the woods, you could yeah. hunt, you could, it was just a, a great place for a, a young boy to grow up. And, and 303, uh, remembering 303, Linda will kind of verify this, Linda Rising will verify this. 303 used to be just covered with trees, just maple <laughs> trees all the way down. It was a single lane highway. And during the fall, it was the most, most beautiful place to actually travel from, say, where we are right now, all the way up to the intersection of uh, Route 42. And I think, you know, uh, speaking like John, uh, sports was our, was our thing. We really enjoyed sports. All right. what, what kind of sports did you play? Oh, I played uh, football, track, baseball, graduate league, pretty much <laughs> everything that uh, uh, everyone else has mentioned, uh, guys have mentioned. But I remember mostly our coaches. Coach Shackleton, uh, Coach Armstrong, Coach Larry Myers. Larry Myers. And they weren't that much older than us. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of... We kind of got along with him, and we got into a lot of mischievous things with the coaches, Mr. Pierce, <laughs> and and so forth. But uh, I would say, I, out of everything, I enjoyed my sports here in Brunswick, and uh, we had some great baseball teams. And I brought some articles in reference to uh, there was a rebuttal, uh, and we used to get a, a program. Uh, they would give a summer program with all the patrons that basically sponsored all the teams. And Brunswick was very, uh, uh, as far as uh, community-wise, uh, the people were very involved with Mr. Art Hamer, mm -hmm. who was a very uh, intricate in uh, getting baseball uh, put together as far as for all the, all the kids to play. And they would put out a, a, a book, and I brought those books for you to take a look at. But there's an article uh, that there was rebuttal because they were very upset that being Brunswick had some great baseball teams, but never a high school team. When we, we were in high school, we didn't have it. But we had some good teams that went to the state. We competed very, uh, very well, uh, and we lost the state one to nothing. And in terms of when we were down in Newark, and uh, but I can only say that uh, my best years were growing up in Brunswick. Why don't you show us what you are given to the historical society here? Oh gosh! Well, again, this jacket is what 56 years old. We were the last class to graduate. It looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah it does. From uh, Brunswick High School, which was the Edwards School. And then at that time, then they uh, went ahead and they uh, built the high school, that, the grounds that we're on right now. But uh, it was uh, a good time, that's all I'll say. And I, I know all the guys here. Uh, Are you still wearing that. this? Uh, <laughs> Period. <laughs> no, I don't. Show off. No, no. I can't fit in that. <laughs> Are you kidding? No. I tried it on just before I came. It was an embarrassment. Well, I'm glad you got it, it off. So, thanks, Chris. But, uh, no. Thank you, Nola. Thank you for inviting me. Warren, what's your name? <laughs> Warren Reese, and uh, I grew up in Brunswick. Uh, my parents had lived in Brunswick from way back. And um, uh, my mother was the English teacher in, in uh, Brunswick, and uh, I think everybody knows Mrs. Reese. Yeah. Yeah. I still hear a lot of nice comments about uh, her being a favorite teacher of everybody, and I you know, appreciate those comments. Um, I just played basketball in uh, high school and, and uh, junior high, and I remember Bill Pierce uh, very fondly. Um, was my first uh, coach back in those days. You know, you didn't start at four years old to play sports. You know, you played in the neighborhoods, and you got to junior high, and that's really when the first organized sports began. Uh, but I remember a lot of uh, days at um, the outdoor courts at um, uh, Laurel. Um, 
uh, what do they call that? Laurel Road School or Apple? Apple. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody would gather there at a certain time and we'd play basketball, play you couldn't see anymore. Um, so yeah, uh, those are the fun days, the simpler days, pre-cell phone days, pre-internet days. Uh, it, was a, it was a different time. So yeah, enjoyed growing up in Brunswick. Great, thanks. Joanne. Hi everybody, good to see you. Um, my name's Joanne. Tucky, but my name was Joanne Stemple, and I'm sure you remember that name. Um, I moved out here in junior high school in the middle of seventh grade, and it was kind of hard on me. And I came from Cleveland, the east side of Cleveland, and it was so different. Um, you know, I came from a neighborhood with houses close together and everyone's playing in the streets, and of course that didn't happen here. So it was kind of a hard beginning. But when I came here, I really loved being in the outdoors. We had uh, 10 acres of land, so I enjoyed that very much. Um, the people the, the people I met out here were very awesome. Um, all the girls I met helped me out. Uh, they you know, understood that it was kind of hard to do that. And, and then I got involved in the sports activities. Um, all the students helped me to say, oh, you got to go to the games, you're going to have a blast. So I joined the pep club, uh, GAA. The pep club was so much fun for me because I love sports in general, and I didn't realize it then, but I went to all the football games, all the basketball games, and I think I screamed the loudest. I think I broke <laughs> yeah, the, the eardrum. I think you did. Unfortunately, I think that continues today. <laughs> I'm still crazy about watching sports, a special team, and if they lose, I get really mad. I scream at the TV. So I'm kind of still like that today. Um, I also participated in some other activities at school, and I was in the, um, the play. I brought some items oh, from the school play, The Mouse That Roared, the <laughs> playbook. She, she's uh, so <laughs> my mother saved all these things. <laughs> and I helped with That's the junior wonderful. and senior proms. I have wow. a few little <laughs> booklets about that. And it was a lot of fun to watch and participate and be, watch yeah. all the people in the sports activities. But I also kind of wanted to be a part of some activities. And unfortunately, it was the time, but there weren't that many sports activities for girls then. So I think that helped me out when I graduated because I said, hey, I want to do this, I want to do that. So I joined, I learned how to ski, uh, golf, play tennis, so I'm a big sports person now, not only watching professional sports, but participating in them. So I still care about that. Uh, as far as the Brunswick schools, I still read the paper, see what's going on and who's <laughs> winning. I pay attention to all, all the scores and everything. So I really enjoyed my time in Brunswick. I think it was a great city for me. I remember after some of the games, I would uh, go to, remember Lee's Pizza? Oh, yeah. yeah. Walk to Lee's Pizza, <laughs> then walk down to Terry Ann's for ice cream. <laughs> then I'd have my family pick me up. So <laughs> I had a wonderful time and made some wonderful friends, which I still have today. You mentioned Good. GAA. What what is GAA? Girls Athletic Association. And was that for you to play intramural sports or what? There really how did wasn't. You do that? There wasn't many sports for for girls at the time. That was yeah. before Title IX. Yeah. But oh, yeah. you know, hearing it about was. the the guys, the the golf team they had. Um, you know, all the activities, it made me want to play and be a part of it. So that kind of shaped my life because I, it gave me confidence. Uh, I was inspired. It allowed me to set goals. And I think that's an important life lesson. Yeah. And, and I have to go. If you email me your address, I have some things I'll send you. Cool. I, I didn't bring them, but I got a few. I'll find you. So it's good to see all of you. So, thanks, Joanne. And Thank next you. we have Miss Patty Essen. Yes, Patty Essen, exactly. Michael, um, we moved to Brunswick in '55. Uh, so, Pardon? 1955. Oh, okay. Once you speak up. Oh, wait till he's done. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, we moved to Brunswick in 55. Um, and I, we liked it here. Growing up as a kid, it was so nice. I mean, we could go anywhere we wanted back then. I remember even, this sounds really weird, but and my mother allowed me to do this, which I don't believe. We would walk to Strongsville to catch a bus, oh. <laughs> to go downtown, you know? I mean, we did all these things. We'd walk from, uh, then Laurel Square started coming in. We'd go, wow, mm -hmm. that's a lot closer than Strongsville. <laughs> so we'd walk, you know, right up to Laurel Square. That's how safe it was in the city. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't have to worry about anything back then. Um, we went to Catholic schools in the beginning. And my dad passed away and my mom couldn't afford it anymore, which was a good thing for me because I loved Brunswick schools from the very beginning. So I didn't come to Brunswick schools, I think, till the sixth, sixth grade, Karen, you think? I think, I think it was eighth, eighth grade. Yeah, that's where it was. Somewhere, somewhere around there we came together and went to Brunswick schools then. Um, and I loved it, fit right in. I felt very comfortable here. You know, everybody's coming from the same area, from mm -hmm. the same... Uh, money stuff that we have here and things like that, you know, um, which Catholic schools are a little harder that way, I think. Um, but Karen taught me how to cheer. <laughs> <laughs> she did. We got to be friends right away. Um, and she said, no, Patty, you're going to be, I said, no, I can't do that. She said, yes, you can. <laughs> you know it? She taught me. I go to her house. She come to my house, teach me how to cheer. And every year it was hard. Because, you know, you had to try out every year, and that was very hard. And you'd think, oh, that Miss Mara, she's <laughs> never oh. <laughs> oh, she is never. And she had a mouth on her like, no, okay, you know. But you know what? She got to know her in later life and everything. What a nice lady yep. she was. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, Gary's parents were real good friends with her, so Gary and Bobby we're always together and she'd look at me and says, I remember you. <laughs> and I'll say, I'll bet you do. <laughs> she remembered everybody. Yes, I mean, just, we had some really good teachers back then, or I thought we, we did. did. Didn't wonderful. we? Wonderful. I mean, they were kind of strict, but you, you loved them anyway, you know? I mean, and I think that really set the stage for us. I mean, even Linda, when we went to nursing school, did you, I mean, I, I mean, John Carroll was a little tough for me. Linda, of course, got straight A's. I don't know about that. No, I bet tough. you did. It was tough. Didn't you think? I mean, such a big difference. And I, I, I don't think it's that way for the kids today. That it, I mean, I think our schools are so much better. Do you think they are? Yeah, I do too. I think they're so much better. And it's um, so for that reason, though, then I sent my kids to Catholic school too. And I, I think I did a big disservice to them in doing that because they're mm -hmm. not wedded to the community then. Do you, do you know what I mean? It doesn't mean, mm -hmm. Brunswick doesn't mean to them what it does to Gary and I. You know well, what I mean? How long were you a cheerleader? Uh, Forever. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Say some, uh, Just until a few years ago. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, we're a team, we're a team <laughs> over here. Karen, Karen taught me how to cheer. She <laughs> said she did. Yes, she did. Can you like guys do a cheer? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no turtling no, no. or anything. Just uh, <laughs> but in that wasn't part today, of the contract, no, was it? <laughs> cheerleading today is so much different. Our our daughter Blight was a cheerleader um, from the uh, fifth grade on, I think. Again, she cheered all the way through college too. So um, it it was good. It was really good for us. It it just made me part of the school. Plus, I had a. I don't know, a feeling, I, I'll start crying, that you're not good enough, you know? But it, it gave me that. It made me feel better about who I was. Well, yeah. It really did. <laughs> and it you really found did. out you were I a really cool girl. I felt more comfortable with who I was. And really, Linda took me into their little group. Remember that, Linda? No, I don't remember yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did. We became friends and took me into that group. And made, you made me feel a lot better about who I was, really. Well, what'd you bring? Oh, I brought my cheerleading sweater. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. See. Mm -hmm. yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. It kind of worn out a little. Like, Karen, I said, either I got bigger or my sweater shrunk. <laughs> <laughs> she was um, tiny. I, yes, she was. I brought a winter sports banquet that I had. Actually, my Aunt Reen, who was my godmother and a lifesaver to us after my dad died. But she sent this to me before she died. Um, so it's really nice from 64. And I have a picture of my brother Tommy who was killed in the service. This was at homecoming. It's at homecoming. Mm -hmm. I recognize the yeah. picture. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got yeah. to get that. Yeah. And, uh, 
Uh, I'd like I to take some pictures far. afterwards. Okay. Oh, I have a, a reunion from, oh, yeah. yeah. From 65, class reunion book. <laughs> I have all those too. Yeah. I have all those too. I brought the yearbook. I brought a lot of articles and stuff, but yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. I, I, I love Brunswick. Always, will always be home to me. We, we still live in Brunswick. We, we travel with the Navy, but it was a good experience, but it was, it was good to come back home. And Gary really thinks this is his home because he always tells me he's here too, from the time he was born. Patty, <laughs> <laughs> can I add something on there? Yes. That, uh, I've got the list of the varsity cheerleaders right in my hand right now because I have a program from the varsity football banquet and it says varsity cheerleaders Patty Essen, Rosemary Kampa, Karen Lindsay, Kay Mapes, oh, yeah. Pat Petrack, and Cindy Shepard. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's a while back. I forgot yeah. a couple of names. Yeah. I forgot yeah. a couple of names. How about, uh, and then they had the, bar, uh, the junior varsity cheerleaders was Carol Adamkwitz. Oh. I don't know how to pronounce it. Retag Jean Alien? Who? Retag Jean. Retag Jean. Retag Jean. Tammy Blonick. Yeah. Beverly Thompson. Oh, I remember Bev Thompson. Sandy Wathu. Yeah. Oh my God. And L Lori Zach. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. And <laughs> I'll tell you a fellow that probably uh, slipped through the cracks here when we talk about the past is uh, uh, managers, uh, John Sapina. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> remember John. Wow. And uh, the other two assistants were uh, Ted Pasco. And Dennis Jolly. Wow. Oh my wow. gosh. So those that is quite uh, you know, when I look back at it, uh Pasco's a golf pro somewhere. Yeah. Is that right? Used to be. That is something. He had a golf Well thank golf. you. And Karen. Yes. Well, I moved here in 1950. And what's your name? My name is Karen Lindsay Cassily. <laughs> And I'm married to John Cassily, <laughs> and I uh, moved here in 1955. And um, the year that I moved here, prior to that time, I think all grades were in the old high school, grades one through 12. Oh, and the year that I moved here was starting the boom of all the building that was going on. And so um, I was in the middle school and uh, I went there the fourth grade wow. and part of the fifth grade. We went half days. Right. Half, half oh, of the our class in Grafton, remember Grafton went school. to the town hall yeah. <laughs> and then in January theater was built which was Grafton Road. So we went, my teacher was Mrs. Galvin, oh. <laughs> and <laughs> needless to say, when I had to leave her, I cried. Now, she was a very rough teacher, and so she said, don't worry, we'll cross paths again someday. So I went up to Kidder, and um, then when I went into the sixth grade, we were on half days again because there was another building boom that came along. And so I, two years, I was in half days. And um, then when we got into the seventh grade, then they was when I became a cheerleader, okay, for basketball. And there were four of us. There was Pat P. Track, Vivian Bishop, uh, Karen Sheely oh, yeah. and myself oh, yeah. and okay. yeah. um, I wanted to be a majorette that's what <laughs> I, I really wanted to be a majorette that was where my heart was set and I had trained myself and I was pretty darn good I'll tell you but I went to see Mr. Sago oh. and this was when I was in the fourth grade. I went to see Mr. Sago and I said, Mr. Sago, do you have junior majorettes? And he said, 
no. <laughs> wow. Wow. Because I came from a small town who had them. He says, but I'll tell you what, you have to play an instrument. And I said, oh my gosh, well my parents can't afford that. And he said, well we'll find something for you to play. So I said, okay. He said, come back when you're in high school. Well, needless to say, my mother had been a cheerleader. Oh. So she said, well, why don't you try to go out for cheerleading? <laughs> so I said, okay. And then I thought, well, you know what? That might be better because I could cheer for basketball, football, whereas if I was a majorette, I'd just be with the band. Right. So I went out for cheerleading and they picked four of us, okay? And we had to go buy our own uniforms. Mm -hmm. So we went to Fisher's Big Wheel <laughs> oh, and we settled on, to fit all of us, we got baby blue. It was baby blue, pleated <laughs> skirts and blouses. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Pastor would take us to all the games. <laughs> and we cheered at the old high school. We were on a stage. And the, the guys played the basketball. Yep. We were up oh on a stage. God. But one funny <laughs> incident was in the seventh grade, we had gone to Wadsworth. And Vivian Bishop was a very tall girl. And we were on a stage, and there was a piano up there. And we were doing our little cheers, and all of a sudden, we were doing our cheer, and we were doing something where we went backwards, and she banged her head on the piano, oh, so oh. it knocked her out, and we all were oh, running over there. I mean, it was hysterical. Everybody was laughing. <laughs> so that was the start of cheerleading for us. So then, uh, in the eighth grade, we started our own. Do you remember? <laughs> Karen came oh. over and told me she said, you're going to be a cheerleader. <laughs> I so, said, behind well, we were split. Our classes were split in the eighth grade. Some of us went to the high school, and some of us went to the middle school. So there were no cheerleaders that year. So I said, well, you know, we had sort of intramural sports with the boys playing basketball. So I said, well, why don't we get some cheerleaders together? <laughs> So Patty goes, oh yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> so we, we just did our little thing and we cheered for the kids in the junior high in our section. Then in the ninth grade, then Patty and Pat and I, Kay Sheely, we were all together again. And uh, we would ride the buses and we had Mr. Pierce. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the cheerleaders always sat in the front. And Mr. Pierce would swear like crazy. <laughs> and if the boys did something wrong, they'd get on the bus. He had to strap. I think it was a boot or something. Remember, he'd go down the house swinging at everybody. It was and a rubber hose. It, it was a rubber hose. <laughs> and we would sit there like, we couldn't open our mouths, could we? Oh and we felt so kid. sorry for all the boys who <laughs> were sitting there like ah. <laughs> Okay, then in, let's see, then uh, in the ninth grade, we, uh, I forgot, uh, ninth grade wasn't too bad, cheering. No. Yeah, we were all together again. In fact, we were all together, and Patty, Patty Track, and Patty and I, all through mm -hmm. high school. Mm -hmm. and. Um, we enjoyed cheering for all the guys, football and basketball. I like basketball best, only because it was warm. warm. It was warm. <laughs> yeah. it was yeah. warm. We stood out there. We didn't have sweatsuits like the cheerleaders no, today. We had these sweaters with a blouse and skirts, tennis shoes, always tennis shoes. And we were in snow and everything, weren't we? I mean, oh, we didn't put our coats on. We didn't have coats, and we froze to death, <laughs> believe me. But we were there no matter what. Yeah. And uh, I remember when we were, I don't know if it was juniors or seniors, where they chartered buses. Uh, I think it was to Rootstown. Oh, oh <laughs> We had, oh. There, for football, there were 
three teams that were always hard on us. And it was Rootstown, and it was Orville, oh. and Wadsworth. Right. Right. They, they, Orville would kill us in football, <laughs> I'm sorry yeah. to say. <laughs> and Rootstown, <laughs> Rootstown. But they chartered buses for us to go. And uh, that was really a nice time because all the kids could buy tickets to get on. I think they chartered three buses. Oh, it was good. They got, the football players don't remember that. But, uh, <laughs> but we, we really enjoyed cheering together. And I think the worst thing was we were always worried that we wouldn't, the three of us we would never end did. up together. But we did, didn't we? Mm -hmm. So we, did. we enjoyed that. We enjoyed the, being with the pep squad. You guys, everybody did a wonderful job. Karen, did you bring some stuff to show? I brought some stuff. Oh, and I also wanted to say was in those days, you know, the football field um, just had the bleachers on both sides, and then they had to, uh, there were so many people who would come to the football games, even the basketball games, but they would line up on the hill side. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah. I'm talking too much. No, you're not. Keep but going. Um, sometimes there would be more people on the hill side that I'm were in the stands. And it was just like today where the kids all run around the back and had a good time. <laughs> hey, and, uh, who uh, was the homecoming queen? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Karen! Was the, who funny. was the king? <laughs> well, George escorted me, but Linda Rising was on the court and Patty yeah. Essen was yeah. on the court, too. Oh, did you bring your dresses? Oh, we made our own pom poms. Oh, we always had to go get. You know what? We had no supervision as cheerleaders. <laughs> we really did. It was kind of nice. <laughs> we got in trouble one time. <laughs> what for? More than once, I think. Well, maybe. <laughs> Because they thought our skirts were, were too, too short. short. Oh. They had to be below the knee. Oh. And Miss Mara made us all come down to the and gym kneel and on the kneel floor. on the floor. You and I were okay. <laughs> we were okay. <laughs> we just have to pull it A couple down of them more. <laughs> but, uh, but we would go down the buses. There was nobody. We didn't have a cheerleader advisor. I know Miss Mara was at basketball games, at a lot of the basketball games, but we kind of did our, we went and bought our own uniforms oh, with our own money. So my you name. organized your own practices? We did our own everything. My neighbor made one year. Remember? Yes, Remember? yes, yeah. she did. We, had, we went and found a pattern, <laughs> and Mrs. I have a picture. <laughs> Yes, yes Mrs. Goodwin. Mrs. Goodwin was a wonderful yeah, lady yeah. who oh, did she that. Was wonderful. Yeah. She, made she was wonderful. And Linda was a cheerleader, too. Linda was a freshman cheerleader. GAA was organized by the girls, too, pretty much. Yes, I remember, remember that. Millie. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Millie girls was a GAA. Yeah. 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 We could only yeah. play half court. Yes. Yeah. Remember? Yes. Half court, I remember that. We were lucky to be there at all. And volleyball was a assist on a serve for girls. Oh, I, I remember, remember that. that. Yeah. Yep. And I think you and Pat Sermolis yeah. organized the pep club. Millie? Yep. I don't yeah, know who all. That's where it came from. And yes, fantastic. Really. But I have, do you want this later or do you want these now? I think. <laughs> You're going to be here for a while. I'm <laughs> teasing. <laughs> 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 oh my God! Yeah, he's got them oh, too. Oh, so nice. so nice. Let's see. Oops. Oh, that's okay. The yeah. And this, oh, this, this, oh, this, is, this is the best devil there was. Yes. <laughs> I've I've seen the newer ones, but they're different. But they're. They're different. <laughs> that one looks ferocious. What else? Yeah, yeah. well, that one even oh, oh. It looks like it's and probably this, not allowed today. I don't think you get this. <laughs> this was the that. freshman. And why they put frosh <laughs> on there, I don't know. Oh, but. Right. <laughs> That's a nice collection. Oh, wow. oh, and I do, this is uh, cheerleaders who I admired from a few years before us. 
<laughs> this was Jeanette Ruff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sherry wow. Green, Polly with Silco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Nura was a Nura, Nura. in there. Eileen yeah. Nura. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this was Junior Varsity, cheerleaders. Aww. <laughs> oh. My so. kids could not believe that was me, Karen, when you <laughs> sent me that picture. <laughs> And this, this is a picture of me. We made our own pom-poms. Oh, pom we oh, wanted pom-poms, so we decided to get together and make those. But we had, a, we had a wonderful time. And I think our class was very, very close. Oh, I agree. Everybody I agree in our that. class. Yes. 65 is the best 65 class. 65 is the best <laughs> class. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> so, John, I, I do think we have a shot at Netflix. <laughs> I think we got a show now. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Thanks, Karen.